Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream, and today is September the 28th. I'm going to do your Just for Today in a Meditation, brought to you by Hope Through Navigation. And this is our Hood Recovery Services. You can reach me at recoveryofhope21 at gmail.com. Hopefully you're having a beautiful morning. I am very relaxed. Looking forward to a very long day. September 28th, the title of it is Hope. What a beautiful title. Looking forward to that. All right. Gradually, as we become more God-centered than self-centered, our despair turns to hope. Basic text, page 95. As using addicts, Despair was our relentless companion. It colored our our every waking moment. Despair was born of our experience in active addiction. No matter what measures we tried to make our lives better, we slid ever deeper into misery. Attempts we made to control our lives frequently met with failure. In a sense, our first step in mission of powerlessness was an acknowledgement of despair. Steps two and three lead us gradually out of that despair and into new hope, the companion of the recovering addict. Having accepted that so many of our efforts to change have failed, we've come to believe that there is a power greater than ourselves. We believe this power can and will help us. We practice the second and third step as an affirmation of our hope for a better life. Turning this power, turning to this power for guidance. As we come to rely more and more on a higher power for the management of our day-to-day life, the despair arising from our long experiment with self-sufficiency disappears. Just for today, I will reaffirm my third step decision. I know that with a higher power in my life, there is hope. How beautiful is that to go from going from being self-centered to becoming more God-centered? Because in the self-centeredness, there's this knowing, right? Even when I am acting in what I consider to be my best interest. But even in that, In that moment when I know that I am being self-centered, I use a lot of I statements. I use a lot of you, they, and them, right? When I'm acting out in the disease, right? Which we know self-centeredness is at the core of our disease, right? So when I'm acting out in that self-centeredness, And I kind of want to take it away from that terminology of acting out because it's not like, oh, I'm about to put on a show, (laughs) right? I'm about to put on a show. Let's, Let's hit the stage and act out, right? It's not like that. Even though the other fellowship does refer to our disease as coming across as a play that we've written And not only did we write it, but we're the main actors in it. Okay, I'm not talking about putting on a garment for rehearsal. I'm talking about something that is so deeply ingrained in us. Sometimes we call it our survival instincts. Okay, so I want to make sure I decriminalize this terminology, self-centeredness and acting out. All right, now that I've done that, (laughs) let's go on. 
So when I am trying to the best of my ability, take care of myself, defend myself, make sure things go the way that I need them to go so that I can feel successful and I can get the things done that I am ambitious to do. When I do that, there is a knowing. There is a knowing even before I get started that my self-will, my energy is not everlasting. It is not even sometimes long lasting. It has to be replenished. Proof number one, I need to go to bed at a certain time, get a certain number of hours so that I can wake up and try to rinse and repeat and do the same thing, but just better than today instead of yesterday, right? So there's already this understanding that as a human being, I only have so much time and energy to invest in whatever my ambitions ambitions are. Okay, so we know that. Well, if we know that, why is it that it is so natural for us to turn to all of the mechanisms, all of the strategies, all of the behaviors that we've come to love and enjoy, maybe not love and enjoy, but we know that they've been working to some degree, but they have not worked completely. Why? Because self-will, one's own energy, has to be replenished by hook or by crook. Willingly or forcefully, there has to be a replenishing of the human reserve of energy. Some people are extroverted and they love to get that energy from other individuals. Some people are more introverted and they love to get that energy from uh, within themselves, their meditation, even extroverted people. Uh, may turn to seclusion and quietness and meditativeness in order to replenish. The point being is that despair is written into the code of self-will. Despair is written into the code of self-will. I won't go so far to say failure, But exhaustion is the tendency to not be able to complete projects is some of the self-defeating experiences that we go through are all written into self-centeredness. It's just a part of the character called self-centeredness as opposed to God-centeredness as opposed to higher power centeredness, as opposed to finding that, that usa, finding that peace, <laughs> right? And these are terms that I, I don't necessarily use, but you might use them. That happy place. What What is it that you need to do and become more dependent upon that than self-centeredness and self-will? What's your opposite of that? Right on a on a podcast I do called, um, well I won't promote it here, but I do another co- a podcast, right? And during that podcast, I was talking about what are the negative thoughts you have. What is the first one that you can recall that broke you down? And then I want you to to t- tell yourself the exact opposite of that. If it was your ugly, then I want you to tell yourself in the mirror, you are beautiful. If someone said, I hate you, right? I just learned this new word called spurn, right? When If someone spurned you, showed abject disgust over you, you get in that mirror and you just say, I think you're the most awesome thing walking on two feet. I love you. Uh, men can change it to be more masculine. But, oh, dude, you looking good today. I love you. Tell yourself the things that you needed to hear. 
I'm not saying that it's going to fix the brokenness, but it's a start. Being God-centered is a start. Reaffirm your third step decision today. I turn my will and my life over to the care of God as I understand him, it, her, whatever. And I'm really pushing this inclusivity because I really have a sense that people are highly religious. Their minds, right? The base that they come from. And so when they find out that their life is not meeting up to whatever doctrine, then they become despondent. You, you need to figure that out. You need to figure out What's your higher power? What? Who is the God of your own understanding? Who? I was talking to a newcomer and they, they, they have this one name on their tongue. Every time they say something, they start out, uh, I, let me just make up a name. The, the name is Michael. Well, Michael said, and Michael is not even their sponsor. Michael doesn't even believe in the process of recovery <laughs> at all, right? Michael happens to be a recovery coach, though. But, I mean, if you have a private conversation with Michael, he will never say anything good about the process of recovery. Not realizing that these 12 steps bring individuals into a relationship with God. Maybe not Michael's God, but God. And, I, you know, for me personally, I believe there's, uh, we've got many gods. That beautiful cowboy brim sitting over there that I'm looking at, that's that dusty rose pink. I can make that a God if I wanted to, right? If I worship it like that. And so when we're having this discussion, I was like, well, what did your God say about it? He said, I haven't prayed about it. Well, I beg to differ because you use Michael's name every time you turn around. Like you don't have a complete thought without referring back to something. And I get mentorship and all of that. But at some point in time where your feet stand, all 10 of them toes, you need to figure out where are you at on this subject? Because God forbid that Michael should get sick. What are you going to do? Where are you going to turn? I mean, I I love my higher power. I have a, a what I would consider a beautiful relationship. Now, there are some things definitely mighty stream needs to get right and change, right? I told you how I can carry on when I am passionate about a topic. Right? You would think a nuclear missile is headed your way. When I get passionate about a topic, I need to dial that back a little bit. And get more passionate about my health. Get more passionate about making sure that my family is well, well taken care of. So it's just like, what's going to age? I know you've talked to God about this. You mean you haven't asked Michael what he thinks about this? Ah, you're funny. <laughs> he said, oh, you're funny. Michael's not my God. Well, it kind of sounds like it. Because rarely do I hear you say, I prayed about this. I do hear you say, I talked to Michael and Michael says such and such. Michael should not have that much power or influence. If you say, you have a God of your own understanding. If you say that, and you admit that it's not a human being, it's an energy or force or power, a higher power, not fallible, but one that loves you and cares for you and is there for you on your dark days and your good days. You know, that kind of higher power, you know, where you can actually call upon it you can actually cry to it. You can actually laugh with it. 
You can actually be outrageous, be silly, enjoy that relationship. See, I, I need something that's greater than human strength. I need something that's far, far more endless and has a reserve of love and care and concern for me that knows my ins and outs where today I might be laughing, but tomorrow I might be crying, but I never fail to talk to my God. I never fail to let my higher power know this is not a good day. This is going to be a day. It's you and me all day long. People are going to think I'm crazy. They're going to think I'm talking to myself, but I know what's going on. I'm being kept by you. I'm having a conversation with you so that I don't end up shaming my family, shaming my relationship with you, doing something that I cannot ever turn back the hands of time. You know what I'm thinking about? You want to know? what I'm thinking about right now. I'm thinking about a story I read in the news of a grandmother that was watching her three-year-old grandson for one of her daughters and her other daughter, the child's aunt, decides to take the child without permission out of the house to the Navy pier. And supposedly the child is acting so horribly that she decides to let go of the child's shirt. This is her story. They have it on video. She pushed the three-year-old into the Navy pier. It took 30 minutes to rescue this baby. He died yesterday. He had multiple seizures and heart attacks. Hmm. That's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about now. Now, what are you going to do, lady? Your life is about to change drastically because you could not get an emotion in check. You could not manage an emotion, a feeling, a frustration over a small baby boy wanting to live and enjoy the waves splashing up against his face you couldn't you couldn't handle it and that was your answer i want to know what your answer is going to be the rest of the days of your life if you live them this is what i'm talking about i'm talking about when you get in that space and don't have to be an unfamiliar place, but when you get in a place where you know you have the potential to go left and you need to go right, do you have a higher power that you can say, <laughs> I need you right now. I need you right now. Because if she had had one, she would have said, let me scoop him up. Let me pick him up and get him away from these rocks. He's, he might kick and scream. He might even hit me. But I need to get him back to my mom's house. I was just trying to show him a good time. She got herself into a place and a space she could not handle. And if she had a God, that God was not someone she turned to in that moment. We all make choices. You need to reaffirm your third step decision today because you don't know what's coming down the pike. You don't know when you walk out the door today what you're going to face. With a higher power, your life is more hopeful. With yourself, it has more despair. Because you're relying on self. Today, I hope that you can see the distinct difference between having a God of your own understanding and a relationship enough where you would turn your will and your life over to the care of it versus not. That's what this meditation is about. My name is Mighty Stream and I am going to have a beautiful day on purpose and I hope that you will too.